Hello and welcome to Close Calls on the 42.ie, brought to you in association with Air Sport. After our week off last week, we're delighted to be back again to preview the weekend's biggest action and look forward to not one, but two huge games coming up this weekend. We're recording live in the 42 HQ this afternoon, just a few hours away from kickoff in tonight's big World Cup qualifier, the Group D clash between Ireland and Moldova in the Aviva Stadium. And of course, just a few, um, a few days away from that game in Cardiff against Wales. I'm Niall Kelly, sitting in for Gavin Casey this week, and joining me, the 42.ie's football correspondent, a man who could probably do a job in the absence of the suspended James McLean tonight, Ben Blake. Hi, Ben. Hey, Niall. How's things? Good, thanks. And joining us on the line, uh, former Ireland international, 20 caps for the country, a man whose club CV includes stints and in Celtic, uh, as well as in Canada, the Ukraine, India, and now back with Dundee. Darren O'Dee, thank you very much for joining us. No problem at all. Darren, I guess to, to start, did you ever imagine when you first moved over, you left home farm and you moved over to Celtic, that your career would take you to all of those places that we've, we've just mentioned? No, no, I didn't at all. I um, was quite content at Celtic. But once I made the first move out to the MLS with Toronto, uh, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit to the world. And I suppose I ended up going from there to Ukraine and, and nothing really bothered me then, being abroad and been in different countries, learning different languages. Um, nothing really fazed me and I actually enjoyed it, so uh, it took me to a few more countries. And how's life now? Back a little bit closer to home. We were saying just before you, you came on air there, you know, good run of form for Dundee of late with two wins from your last three after a slow enough start to the season, seeing things seem to be clicking for you. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, obviously for, for myself personally, been back home and, and uh, with my family is, is great. Um, and yeah, with Dundee, it's it's been we've a new manager, a lot of new players, a young young. We've actually, I think, there was something I saw on Twitter the other day. We've the youngest uh, squad this season in, in the whole of Britain. Um, I'm probably the one bringing up the age <laughs> in that squad. But, um, but uh, no, it's it's been good, and and I think the longer the season goes, the better we'll get. How how do you approach weekends like this now, Darren? And do, are there a little bit of mixed emotions? Obviously, you're still playing football at a, a good level. Would you still like to be involved, or how do you feel when you have to sit back and watch these the, the end of a World Cup qualification campaign from afar? I would I like to be involved. I think anyone um, would like to be involved. But do I do I even think I have uh, the slightest chance? No, and I don't. Um, I don't even believe I should have the slightest chance. I don't think I'm playing at a high enough level. I think if you look at the other defenders in the squad, they're playing at a much higher level um, than myself. So, um, listen, my, I had a great time with Ireland. I loved it. Would I like to play again? Of course I would. Um, but I think my time has passed and, and uh, they're doing just fine without me. You, the, the big news, I suppose, of last night, Ben, you were out in, you were out in Abbottstown yesterday for the pre-match press conference. And I suppose a little bit unexpected, Martin O'Neill, out of nowhere, kind of casually dropped a hint that maybe he might be staying on for, for another few years. And then within a couple of hours last night, the FAI were out and confirmed that the management team have extended their contracts up onto Euro 2020. The timing of it all may be slightly unusual. Yeah, well, it's one of these things that he's regularly asked about. Um, generally, he, he he won't give much away, keep his cards close to his chest. But as you mentioned there, he, he dropped a major hint yesterday that himself and John Delaney had had good discussions and that both parties were, were interested in extending their partnership, I suppose. So um, I think it was maybe less than six hours after that. It was a bit of a surprise. And the FAI put a tweet out and uh, announced that the... the the deal had been agreed, so he, he wants to stay up until the Euro 2020. Darren, you've, you've worked with Martin in the past. What do you what do you make of the, the timing of the announcement? I suppose, do you think he's the right man to, to carry on Ireland, regardless of how the next four or five days go, that he's the right man to carry on Ireland through for another two or three years? Well, I was just about to say, I think the the people and, and fans will, will probably tell you if he's the right man in a, in a few days' time. Um, it'll all be off the back of do we qualify for the playoffs or not. Um, but yeah, I do think um, he should stay on. I think he's... There's been players moved on, older players, and it's it's a gradual process. I think there's younger players coming in. He's um, he's overseen that. And I think we went to the Euros. He brought us to the Euros. We performed very, very well there. And who knows? It's obviously on a knife edge at the minute. 
but we could be uh, going for the first World Cup. I think it's in 16 years. So um, yeah, I think it's the right right thing to do. I agree with you. The timing is a slight bit strange, but it would be even stranger to announce it in two days' time if we weren't to qualify, mm -hmm. um, because I don't think it would be taken as well, obviously, <laughs> then. So the, the timing of it is, is slightly strange, but I could probably understand that he's going to be here regardless of the results, and I think it sends out a strong message to the squad and to the fans. So, um, listen, I think it's good news. It's not the first time, Darren, the FAI have done something like this. Like you were When you were still involved under Giovanni just before the Euros in 2012, they came out and they decided in advance of that competition that you know Giovanni was staying on for the next round of World Cup qualifiers and announced it. What kind of impact did that have on that group of players at that time? The impact, not none really. Um, listen, you're playing for your country. I think even club football is similar. Footballers are fickle. If they're playing, they're happy. If they're not, they're not happy. And it's it, what the manager is doing regardless of the manager I don't think many players take too much notice of it at times but listen Tr Trapattoni went to the Euros and there were songs sung about him and he was a hero we came up <laughs> we had a bad Euros and he came back and he was gone within like I don't know how many fixtures it was so he was gone quickly afterwards so it, it's very it, it's it's not, like the fact that Martin O'Neill has uh, extended or is going to extend if, if we weren't to qualify for the World Cup and, and then to have a slow start to the next Euros campaign It'll get changed. Managers get changed very quickly these days. Um, so, um, the, to the players, will it affect them or will it give them a boost? I don't think it will matter either way. I suppose the danger is where we're talking, we're getting a little bit away from ourselves. We're nearly thinking about what's going to happen in five days' time as opposed to what's going to happen in two or three hours' time. Ben, you've been out around the camp all week, as I said. A few new faces in there this week. Martin O'Neill's hand may be slightly forced. John Walters injured. Kevin Doyle announcing his retirement last week. James McLean, Robbie Brady both suspended for tonight's game. What what kind of team do you expect to see Martin O'Neill put out tonight? Are we likely to see the strongest team possible? Is he likely to use it as an opportunity to maybe give a few of those new faces 20, 30 minutes in the legs? To in the, on the off chance that maybe we might need them on Monday night in Cardiff. What way? What's the best way to approach tonight's game apart from obviously taking the three points that we need? Well, like you said, there's a number of big players that, for one reason or another, won't be involved tonight. Um, the two lads that are suspended, James McLean and Robbie Brady, will be back on Monday. So th I suppose they need to get a rest as such. Um, he, he's going to go with a, a really strong side. I think. I think. He's been trying to emphasise all week that he's not looking beyond the Moldova game. I know they're, they're minnows in the group, but at the same time, they still have to get the job done. If we drop points against them, then the, the Wales match is, is fairly irrelevant, you know. So he's going to stick with a strong side. I can see him going with Darren Randolph and goal, obviously, and the back four that he's used most recently, which is Cyrus Gracie, a right back in, in place of the injured Seamus Coleman, um, Aaron Clark and, and Shane Duffy at centre half, and Stephen Ward, who's having probably one of the best spells in his career at the moment, so him at left full. Uh, midfield is possibly where there's a number of different options and I suppose it looks like who's going to play alongside. David Moyler was out at his pre-mess press conference last night. The likelihood is he he play in, in midfield. He's he's done a good job. He hasn't always been a regular, but he's done a good job whenever he's come in. So then it's whether do you do you play Jeff Hendrick alongside him in the deep role, Glenn Whelan, Connor Horan came on. Um, there's options there. Then I suppose uh, you look a little bit further forward. He he's gone regularly with a three behind a, a lone striker. So. With now James McLean, maybe Aidan McGeady might come in, Wes Houlihan, we'd all love to see him play, I'm sure. And then there was talk as well yesterday, he gave a good bit of praise to uh, Colin O'Dowd, who's uh, one of the younger players in the squad, who he's got minutes in this group already, he's played against Moldova, he came off the bench, he played against Serbia off the bench more recently, so he could be one of those players that comes in, uh, uh, someone that maybe hasn't been as regularly as regular as possible then it's uh, I suppose the, the long front man do you go with Shane Long who who has often played but hasn't been scoring regularly at all at club or, or country or Daryl Murphy who has six goals in the championship now at the moment um, he's probably our most informed striker and someone I'd like to see start Darren Scott Hogan Johnny Maguire Aidan O'Brien do you expect to see any of them feature at all tonight or is tonight kind of the old dogs for the hard road get the points in the bag 
Do, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think it'll be an experienced side. I think it'll be the team and the players you've seen so far in this campaign. As for will they feature, possibly you might see one or two feature if we were... If we are comfortably winning the game with, with 20, 30 minutes to go, you might see a couple of bodies that will play against Wales been rested. Um, the, the team, I, I obviously believe you could stick out any 11 and they should beat Moldova comfortably. But I think it's important if, if Martin O'Neill was to go with players like O'Dowd and the Gibi wingers, if, if you like old fashioned wingers that want to get crosses into the box, then I'd possibly play two up front, then I'd play Long and, and uh, Murphy up front. And, and put real pressure on the Moldovans. If you're playing players like Wes, well, then maybe maybe um, it's a different story. So, uh, Martin O'Neill has a few options. Uh, obviously, with the boys, two lads been suspended. Um, their misses, but against Moldova, I don't expect them to be missed too much. And actually expect it to be a, a good thing that they're rested for, for the Wales game. Well, earlier this week, our reporter Ryan Bailey caught up with another Irish defensive legend. He met Paul McGrath in Dublin and he started by asking him what we can expect to see from Ireland against Moldova this evening. We're missing a few players, but I think um, if we can't beat Moldova, then you know we shouldn't be in the competition anyway. Uh, I think we'll win that one and, and probably win it easy, um, even with the players missing. So I'm, I'm hoping that's the three points put to bed. And then we can move on to the next one, which is going to be um, the Wales game, which is going to be a hell of a lot tougher. Roy Keane yesterday kind of was quick to downplay the, the significance of the loss of Gareth Bale for Wales on Monday. I don't think we can really downplay it. Like It's a huge blow for them and a huge boost for us, I suppose. Um, yeah, if, it's, if, if, if everything they're saying is true, you know, I've, I've, I've had that before where they, some, their star player isn't playing for a while and then suddenly he's, it, things are getting a little better for him when, when it's coming closer to game time. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, I, I genuinely believe until the night you're not going to go know who's going to be playing on either side, and until you do, you're not going to be know the the outcome of the game. Is there? Do you feel this genuine belief in the squad that we can go to Cardiff and get the result that we need? Of course, yeah, because I, I, I you know, I don't think uh, any Irish player plays a game that um, or walks onto a football pitch where he believes that he's going to get beaten by the opposition. It happens, but no Irish player wears that jersey and walks out there thinking they're going to get beaten. Can you kind of recall a similar situation when in your own playing days with Ireland that you kind of went into a game where it's so make or break after a long campaign? Um, you know, there's been lots of times when, when I've walked, you know, even against England and Stuttgart, I thought they, they, they had a better team than us. But once, like I say, you, once you put on that green jersey, you walk out there and, and um, that day, it just happened to be a day that we beat England. So, I mean, you know, it happens. What do you kind of feel that Martin O'Neill's message will be in the dressing room? Presuming we do beat Moldova on Friday night going into Monday. Um, just, you know, that, that, that we, ha you know, we have to lift the game again. But, you know, Moldova, I don't think, are, are, uh, are going to give us the same test that Wales are. And I think... Uh, players know that themselves so that I, I hope they're going to go into the Moldova game taking the three points comfortably and then go into the Welsh game giving it their all and I mean that's all they can do and if we come home with three points on that on that uh, night then that, that'll, be a, um, that'll be a great result for us. Darren, Paul spoke there, as we just heard a little bit about Gareth Bale. The news that he might be out this week was kind of greeted as if it was nearly a 1-0 start for Ireland when they go to Cardiff on Monday. But you can hear from him there a little bit of scepticism that it could just be mind games from the Welsh that, you know, they will obviously give Gareth Bale every chance to prove his fitness ahead of Monday's game and he wouldn't be at all surprised to still see him feature. If you're Martin O'Neill, if you're Roy Keane, if you're this Irish team, how do you prepare? Do you prepare on the basis that Gareth Bale is out? Do you prepare on the basis that he's in? Do you have to prepare for all contingencies? I, thi I think Gareth Bale, well, obviously is a, a phenomenal footballer, but I don't know if, if his inclusion would change the way Martin O'Neill would go about the game and, and the personnel he would pick. So I, I think they would prepare the same either way. Um, but obviously, if he was if he was to play, he's someone that needs to be earmarked um, a lot. He's he's by far and away the most talented player Wales have got. And uh, if he was to be injured, and, and hopefully Chris Coleman isn't, 
pull on our leg. Hopefully, he is out of the game. But if he's not, he's, he's someone. But I don't think it would affect Martin O'Neill's preparations for the game all too much. So either way, um, I don't think it will affect affect things too much. Ben, you were you were at the game in Dublin earlier this year. There's been so much said and written about it. There was at the time uh, a game which maybe got away from everybody a little bit in the second half. Tempers started to, to rise. We had that bail challenge on John O'Shea, which maybe set the tone for quite an unpleasant few minutes. And then the Neil Taylor tackle on Seamus Coleman, which is obviously the repercussions are still being felt by Seamus, by the Ireland team, by, by Everton, by, by everybody now a good six months later. Do you expect... What, what kind of game do you expect? Like, Is there going to be a lot of simmering bad blood that his left over from that Dublin game when the sides meet on a Monday night? Um, I expect it to be a frantic game. I think it'll be full-blooded, but I, I don't think there'll be players going out looking to get vengeance or anything like that, you know what I mean? Players move on. That's that's months ago at this stage now. Um, one point I will make is that Wales to go to uh, Georgia and very like it's it's Tbilisi as as we saw ourselves is a tough enough place to go to so I know some people might be watching this back afterwards and Wales may have run away <laughs> with a four 0 win to make me look a bit silly but it, it they may well drop points there as well you never know so uh, going into the game um there's very much to play for it's going to be a, a great atmosphere as this management team have seen have shown in the past we can pull big results out you look at the germany game in dublin shane long's winner um at the euros the italy game when we needed to win um austria and vienna we beat in austria and vienna there in last november so this team does have big big results in it Mm -hmm. There's a couple of comments coming in from people watching us on Facebook at the moment. If anybody else is out there watching, by all by all means, comment. Charlie Byrne, good luck, lads. Three 0 win. Kieran Graham has a question for you, Darren. Darren, he said, would you start uh, Scott Hogan up alongside Murphy tonight? Would that be an option for you? No, no, it wouldn't be. Um, I think, I think you go with the players that have that a got us to the Euros and performed really well at the Euros and and. OK, the, the last couple of performances weren't great, especially at George, and I understand the, the fallout from that, but there's this clamour for new players to come in at this stage in the campaign is, is crazy. Um, and I don't, I understand it happens, but sometimes, like, Hogan's not playing regularly even. Um, as you said, Murphy is, Murphy's scoring goals. Shane Long is, oh, I wouldn't say firing on all cylinders, but he's been playing the Premier League for a number of years and, and, and has done well for him and talking about the big games and has done well in the big games. So, no, this is time for this isn't time for testing players and giving people a chance. Um, we'll have a chance to do that after. Um, whether we're in, going to the World Cup, before the World Cup, you'll have friendlies, or if we're not, we'll have friendlies to try these players, but not now, I wouldn't say. You touched on a point there that David Myler made during the week when he was up for his media duties and he kind of criticised the media in a little bit for creating a bit of an atmosphere of doom and gloom around the Irish side that okay admittedly that they had been in a very strong position after that win in Vienna and maybe some of that momentum has been lost this year do you think that Martin O'Neill, Roy Keane this team for the position that they're in now with two games to go that they're maybe being judged a little bit too harshly that they've done well to get to, to where they are now and people are being overly critical of them no no that that's that's football. If, if you're playing at the level of the Irish national team, you've got to expect that these things happen. And I've I've seen enough of it in my career to know that it does happen. Um, but I, I was very outspoken after the last uh, round of fixtures. The the out, the outcry to it and the the criticism was was crazy. This Ireland team has has performed kind of we kind of got through the group if you like but not in style and we very rarely play with style and when we get these big wins and we people are all on the bandwagon and don't ever look at the performance but when we obviously don't when we don't get results then we this talk of players we need new players we need new management and um, we need a new style of play i kept hearing style of play ireland have been performing the same way for since i've been alive jack charles and mick mccarthy Trapatoni, Martin O'Neill. There's your four most successful Ireland managers since I've been alive, and they all play the same way: direct football, fast tempo, in your face, get after them type of football. Not playing from the back, and and all of a sudden when we lose or we lose a game, and it's we don't we don't keep enough possession of the ball, and there was a real 
it annoyed me the last the last round of picks it annoyed me the and it's not the media it's the fans as well the fans, it's everyone they kind of it's a real there was a real drama after the last um set of results so i think it's time for calm head we'll beat moldova tonight and it'll set up a huge fixture in wales and hopefully hopefully we can get into a playoff then and who knows it could be the first world cup in 16 years so these players will be the main thing is that they stay calm and focused everything's been rosy for the last week while well, it's, it's just got a little bit rocky now, but it's time for calm heads and experience. On the basis of what you've seen since France last summer, on the basis of what you've seen in the disqualification campaign so far, if Ireland do get the three points that we expect against Moldova tonight, can you be confident in a big performance in Cardiff on Monday night? Yeah, I think we touched on that. They, they have big performances in them. They've proven that. Um, so, yeah, I would I would expect them to go to Wales and, and perform well. I, do, do I expect a good match, a good Real, real good, high quality match. No, I never do when Ireland are playing. I expect a frantic pace, lax quality, but full commitment. Um, and I think what we we're talking about, do, do I think there'll be bad blood? We were talking about there. I think there will be bad blood. If I remember Gareth Bale's tackle, I was furious with it when I saw it, more so than Taylor's. Taylor's consequences were much higher, but Bale's tackle was a coward's tackle. And, and I think it was a couple of minutes after that, that was when Taylor's uh, challenge went in. So I, if I was going into that game, I'd be going in full-blooded borderline um, and I'd be trying to get away with everything. I'd certainly be flying into everything early doors um, and I expect that to happen. I'd say if Martin and Roy are listening to you, you might be getting a phone call now before Monday. I'd say they wouldn't mind that kind of spirit in the dressing room now come Monday night, Darren. Uh, just well, if they hear me, they probably think I'll be sent off in five minutes. <laughs> so probably won't call me. Just before we wrap up, I suppose we better get some predictions. So we'll go with tonight's game first. Ben, how do you see it going? Tonight, I think we'll run out 3 0 winners. 3 0. Darren, tonight, comfortable enough? Yeah, I was going to say 3, but I'll just be different and say 2. That's two all right. Now. I think we'd settle for we'd settle for either now. And then Monday night, Ben, Ireland win tonight. They get the three points they need. On Monday night, are we going to go and get the win that we need to hopefully send us through to a playoff if the other results go our way? Um, my head says a draw. <laughs> Heart says comfortable win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if either your head or your heart are right there, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, Darren, Monday night, do Ireland have any chance of getting the result that we need to go through to a playoff? Oh, of course they've got. They've got a, a massive chance. There's much of a muchness between the teams. But <laughs> Ben's taking the words out of my mouth. My head says nil all. My heart says one nil Ireland. And uh, uh, hopefully my heart's right. Okay, well, Darren, thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. And best of luck with the rest of the season at Sunday. Thanks very much, Thanks. Lad. Ben, thank you as well. That's just about all we've got time for on Close Calls this week, brought to you in association with Air Sport. We'll be back next week when we'll hopefully be celebrating Ireland's wins against Moldova and Wales and looking forward to potential playoff. And we'll be looking forward to next weekend's big Premier League clash, which is, of course, Manchester United against Liverpool. So until then, thanks very much. Goodbye.